What's up everybody? Welcome back to 9to5Gamers and today we're doing a review of Comic Hunters. This is a very hard to find game, but don't worry. English copies are coming to the United States soon. Hopefully, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that they do. But if they don't, you might want to snag yourself a copy of this game. This game is incredible. I'm going to show you a little bit about the components inside the box and then I'm going to tell you my overall score of the game and what I think about it from my couple of playthroughs that I've done of it. Well, see you guys soon. All right, guys, so here is Comic Hunters. Uh, this is the Brazilian copy of the game, um, which means that it's going to be, the language is going to be in Portuguese. Um, but as we'll talk about, they're going to probably come out with copies in America at some point, an English copy. But for now, let's take a look inside the box at the uh, components. So we've got the instruction manual, which you know, if you, unless you speak Portuguese, is going to be relatively useless. But the game is so simple that once you play it one time, it's very hard to forget how to play it. It's very easy. The illustrations on uh, the in the books can help you remember, even if you don't speak or are able to read Portuguese. Um, if you if you're a Spanish speaker, you can kind of make heads or tails with everything. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, instruction booklet. It also comes with a little score pad, which um, if you get the Brazilian copy, obviously you won't be able to read this, but these match up with um, parts of the board, which I'll show you, and then you can kind of just understand where everything goes after that. Uh, it comes with uh, some tokens, the first player marker with uh, Stan Lee's glasses, which I thought was a cool little interesting touch, and then a whole bunch of little tokens with different comic book characters you can see some. Uh, Captain America, Black Panther, Spider-Man is in there, and so um, these are going to determine the values of the uh, uh, the comics themselves. And then we've got uh, some bags full of. Um, the game doesn't come with bags, um, so if you do want to um, uh, put the, the the cards in um, into bags, that'll be super helpful. But um, I'll take out a few of these just so you can get a glimpse of them. So these are age one comics. These are comics that are like in the years 2000 and up. So when you look at these, these are more newer uh, comic covers, but all of them are actual comic covers. Over here you have the symbol of the, sorry about that. We have the symbol of Iron Man and um, on the side, it gives you a uh, symbol that we'll talk about later what they do, but this one's like Iron Man and this is all in English here. So Iron Man, uh, versus number one edition 2013 you got a Doctor Strange Spider-Verse Gwen Stacy um, you got some Spider-Man comics Black Widow Captain America number one issue but these are have the dates on them like 2008 2018 20 2007 2009 so these are all more of the modern comics and these are the uh, the ones with the one on them but if you were to um, check out the twos the the twos are gonna be comics that I think are in the 80s and the 90s and then era three um, these comics these are comics that are from the 50s or the 60s 70s maybe eras and so um, like 1979 Black Panther 1963 Avengers this is like the original Avengers and as you can see this one has um, the uh, Iron Man, Hulk, uh, Thor uh, symbol because it counts as all of those characters, but only one at a time. I'll explain more how the game works, but like I said, these are going to be your older comics, and man, these are so cool to see some of these like old com. I'll tell you what, man, playing this game, even if I lost, just making like a Black Panther collection and uh, being able to collect the comics is such a cool part of this game. And that's uh, the those boards, and then. Uh, last but not least, that's the cards rather. Here is the uh, player, the actual game board, which uh, looks like this. Um, over here is like a little iPad, and this one's gonna have reminders of um, each of the different types of um, drafts you'll do. So the first one, A, is gonna be, I believe, like a general like comic book store. Uh, this is going to be a flea market. This one's going to be uh, an internet site like uh, eBay, an auction website. And then this one's convention when you go to a convention. And each one has illustrations to remind you of what kind of drafts you do. It also has a reminder of which card era 
you use for that draft. As you can see the convention, you get uh, arrows one, two, and three. Comes with a little check mark that goes on here and it explains the, um, the order. So this is the itinerary, um, which is why it says itinerario. Um, and then so uh, A will tell you, first you're gonna go to the uh, store, then the second one, you're gonna go to the uh, flea market, then you're gonna go to the convention, and then after that, you're gonna organize your collection. Over here on this side of the board, this is where you place the little comic book tokens to determine which ones are the most valuable. So the number one most valuable will be on the top line. Second line will be the second most valuable. Third will be the third most valuable. And then you've got a variety of uh, comic collections. You need a minimum of three cards in order for a collection to be considered uh, a collection. And if you have four different characters, um, comic book collections of four different characters, meaning you have three of each character, um, then they're all different characters. You will get 10 points. If you can manage to collect all of them, you can get 40. Over here, this little coupons. These are <coughs> your secret stash. This is money you will use um, to uh, buy con uh, comics at um, from the auction website. <coughs> and then down over here, uh, these little symbols in the corner are going to show you number ones and uh, versus special uh, tokens go on there. You can change the tokens or you can just use the ones that are pre-printed and then pick one randomly. Um, that provides a lot of variety to the game, but it determines which kinds of like the first appearance or the number one uh, comic. This is like a first appearance of a character or a new suit or something. Um, and then they also have like versus um, comics, people versus each other. And then whoever scores the most on these tracks is gonna get the most points if you score the most, you get 15. Second most is 12, eight, and three respectively for a four player game. Three player game, two player game. So, and in case of a tie, you add first and second place together and then divide it by two. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the game board. Very, very simple, very easy to look at. And it has really good reminders of everything. And even for um, this uh, Brazilian uh, copy, man, I, I don't even really need to know how to speak Portuguese to, to know how this game operates. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, bring it back up top and show you what I think of the game and how it sets up. And uh, we'll see you guys back up top. All right, guys, now that you've taken a look inside the box and you've seen the components, now we're gonna take a look at how you play this game. So if you're setting up for four players, this is the way the setup would be. Um, you would put your little check mark over here. This check mark is going to uh, keep track of the different phases in each round. So the game lasts for three rounds. Uh, the basic object of the game is to accumulate the most points, um, uh, victory points, and whoever has the most is the winner. And so the game is split up into three rounds um, each round has three, uh, about four phases. It's three drafting phases and then one organization phase, and then you go on to the next round. Now, in these phases, um, you are going to do um, different types of drafts. One of the things I really like about this game is that when it comes to the, the drafting, this does four different types of drafts, which I think are super, super cool. And I'm gonna show you some illustrations of what those look like, um, each one of them. Um, but the game sets up really, really easy. So if I'm gonna go ahead and start ranking this game, when it comes to setup and storage, um, the only minor knock that I had against it was that the cards, once you take them out of the plastic, the cards just kind of fly around inside the box unless you have your own bags. So I highly recommend, number one, if you buy the Portuguese copy of this game, uh, the Brazilian copy, which, which the language is in Portuguese, that's what I have. Um, I lucked out in getting mine because we found um, a, a guy who had some copies from somebody he knew. Um, and um, if you happen to get a copy of this, I would sleeve it immediately because you never know, man. Games like this could always be one of those like, hey, Comic Hunters is this amazing game, but I have the original Brazilian copy of the game. Um, and so that could maybe be worth something. I don't know. I'm not very good when it comes to the values of things, but these Brazilian copies could be worth something. So it's good to protect them as best as you possibly can. So I sleeved all my cards, but it doesn't come with bags for the cards. So you'll need to get bags. So make sure you buy some bags before you open this up. So before you unseal the box and open it, 
um, get sleeves for your cards and make sure you buy uh, little bags. But if you're a board gamer, you probably have a billion bags lying around everywhere like I did. So I went ahead and just sleeved everything and put them in bags. Um, it doesn't give you those things. Those are things you're gonna need to buy extra on top of the cost of the game. And if you're buying this imported, it's gonna be very expensive. So as far as the, the storage goes, um, it's not a lot, it's just a board. And then on top of the board, you put the instruction manual and everything in there. And uh, all the pieces come with, it comes with like one or two bags for like the little bits. Um, the bits are a pretty good quality when it comes down to it. The only thing I didn't like was um, one of my pieces when I popped it out, the whole top of it came off. I had to literally glue it back together um, with some, uh, I didn't even know which glue to use. I used a hot glue gun to, to make sure that it stuck, but that fixed it perfectly. Like it doesn't, you can't even tell that it was uh, not stuck together. So that works out really, really well. Um, but the bits are, are pretty good quality. The cards are great quality. It's Everything's fine as far as the production goes. So as far as that part of it, um, that is a, uh, honestly, a 1.5, I'd say, because that's the only little knock I'm gonna give when it comes to the storage of everything. Um, now let's take a look at the, the teach, okay? So because this is a Brazilian copy, um, you have to go through an extra little bit. They have the English PDF online. So you have to print that out and, and, and read through it that way. Um, and I think the, the, whoever made that manual did a really good job. They, they produced it really well. And uh, I think that it didn't leave me with any questions. Everything seemed pretty good. Um, but there are some tutorials online on how to play the game. Um, so, um, but for the most part, it's pretty simple. I don't think there's anything that's very, very confusing. Teaching it is very easy. As a matter of fact, all you have to do when you teach this game, this is the thing that I liked about it, is, um, is teach, hey, this is how you get points. Teach how everything is, um, what everything is worth, how you get your points. That's all you have to teach and teach that there are four different types of ways to uh, acquire comic books. And then after that, you're gonna do there's four different types of drafts you have to teach but you can teach them when you get to that step which i thought was really cool so it's like hey guys everybody's gonna get four cards so here's how this draft works all right guys we're gonna set this up this is how this draft works okay by the way we're gonna do this draft this is how this draft works and then once everybody knows how to play the game you just set it up and go um uh, and and it's really 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 good so very easy to easy to learn it's not a, a huge rule book um, that, that, that we have here. It's not a very complicated game. It's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it, um, but it's not so light that it's like strategically weak. Like the strategies in this game for, uh, like are, 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 there's a lot of things you can do, including tactics of, hey, when I draft, even though I'm gonna draft and I'm gonna take all these cards and I'm not necessarily collecting all of these, let's say there was like two Captain Americas and two Black Widows and a Spider-Man and I'm collecting Black Panther comics, I can take all five of those because what if all five of them are three valued comics? It gives me a lot of um, money that I can pay for my comics because every comic you collect in this game goes into your hand and then during the collection phase, you are going to have to pay for those comics with the comics in your hand. So you look at your hands and you pick out the ones you wanna keep and add to your collections and then the, you have to pay for them with the other comics. And then each comic is worth whatever's printed on the back of it. So these comics are worth one, two, and three. Um, and so um, there is a lot of cool strategy in this game. Um, so it's very easy to teach, very easy to learn. Um, and I didn't have any issues teaching this to anybody, man. And, and honestly, it kept the entire table engaged like everybody who i played this with really really enjoyed it and loved it very easy to teach very easy to learn um I, so it gets two points for for that part of the game so as far as the visuals and components go everything component wise is really good i had kind of mentioned that and touched on that a little bit earlier but component wise everything is good everything was solid only minor issue i had was that this um like that thing came unglued and stuff like that and it just didn't come with some of the stuff for storage. Um, but as far as the visuals, everything visually is beautiful. These cards are incredible, man. Just because they, they used real life comic books, you know what I mean? Like this was, and the fact that they got Marvel licensed to do this, oh my goodness, man. These, just seeing all these comics and then the fact that I have some of these comics, I'm like, man, these are, I have some of these comics literally sitting in my storage. And um, I, I was just, man, I was just blown away by the visuals, the artwork, everything in this game looks great. Even this little board is just fantastic, man, for what it is. 
I think that this game was very well produced. Um, it's not like overly produced and it's not like it has top tier production, but honestly, it's perfect the way it is. I don't feel like it needs better production than what it has. Even the box and everything is just great. Um, I, I, I think that they they didn't need to do anything. What I would like, but this is just a personal thing, I would like to deluxify this game, but because the game doesn't exist in English, I don't think anybody is really selling anything for it on Etsy yet. So if anybody has an Etsy store and you want to produce bits for this, I'll be the first person to buy them, guaranteed. Because if I can get little plastic tokens, like resin tokens for this, man, that would be out of this world. And if we could make um, uh, the little chips, that the little counter chips that you can score with, um, what happens is that as you go down this track, um, they will stack, like if the orange player uh, ties up with the green, they stack on top of each other, but the pieces are always kind of like lopsided and you always got to fix them. So if they had like a little locking mechanisms on the tops and bottoms of them, so that way you could um, stack them up, that would be really cool. So I'm just making a wish list for somebody to make me this, um, and obviously I will pay for it. Um, but yeah, if somebody's out there and has an Etsy store and you have a 3D printer and you can get the design files or something to, to, to make an official version of this, I would definitely buy that. I think the check mark is pretty good. I don't think you really need a better acrylic check mark, um, but unless they wanted to do one, like maybe like an Avengers logo, an acrylic Avengers logo that just goes down the, the checklist. But I think the check mark's cool because it's an itinerary and it's like check, check, check. And it's got the little pencil to remind you that you're checking off things and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, as far as the production value goes, the, the, the visuals, the components, everything is top tier. It's getting two points from me. So uh, next up uh, is gameplay and mechanics. Um, the gameplay is so solid, man, just because it's, it's just drafting. You know what I mean? It's like seven wonders, but each round you're doing a different type of draft. And then once you've done that draft once, like there's draft A, B, and D on the first round, then you do A, which everybody has already done. Then you do C and it's like, oh, C is a new type of draft. I haven't seen this draft. Then you do draft D, which everybody did in the first round. Then in the next round, you skip draft A and you go B, C, D, um, and you do those three types of drafts. So you're able to do each draft twice. And um, now the gameplay is, is really simple. Like you take cards and then you just say to yourself, hey, the only reminder you have to give yourself is that these cards are not free. You don't just get to keep these comics. You have to pay for them. This one's gonna cost you one. These will cost you two. These will cost you three. And so when you're paying for your comics, you have to keep a good eye out on well, and and here's another thing too. It's like because the score is based on, um, your score is not based on how old your comics are. That I would say that that's probably something that was a little bit weird about the game. Is that, and it's something that I thought was like a minor nitpick to me was that obviously if I have uh, this comic, which is a Black Widow comic, and it's uh, Avengers, and it's the uh, first appearance of the Red Guardian, right? First appearance of the Red Guardian. And then this is has a high value of three. I don't get three points for this. It's just gonna be counted as how much of a specific comic I have. So what that means is that if I have one really valuable first appearance of Spider-Man comic in, in one of my collections, but some other person has a whole bunch of 2000 collection. They have like five Spider-Man's comics from the year 2000. Those aren't worth nearly as much as that one is, but it doesn't factor that in, which I thought was kind of weird. I would have thought that these, if you had the more of these you had in there, the more valuable your comic collection would be because you have high priced ones, but that's not the case. So it almost kind of incentivizes you to just use these as money because I would rather have three Spider-Mans from here than one Spider-Man from here and they are all the same value except that's going to score me more points. I thought that that was kind of weird. Um, that's my only knock against the game. It's like as much as I wanted to keep all these really valuable comics, I'm like, I might as well just sell it. It's going to give me more points if I just get rid of it versus keeping it. So that part was a little odd to me was like the scoring. I just wish that the older comics had more value. Maybe there, maybe that is the way it's supposed to be. And because I'm reading the directions in 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 Portuguese, maybe that's the reason why I, I missed out on some part of that scoring. But from what I thought, I, I pretty sure that we scored it correctly. And from what I can tell, it seems like 
there's no real, um, like you don't get a lot of points just for the values of the comics. But if I'm playing that wrong, somebody in the comments let me know if you have the game. But um, from what I can tell, that's how the game plays. So as far as the gameplay mechanics go, it's all just drafting. There's some really cool drafting. So like the first one is just everybody gets uh, four cards uh, from, the, from the, one, the one pile. And then you take one, draft, and then pass, rather. Um, so you draft one, pass the stack to the next player. They take the three that they just received. They take one, pass the stack. You get a stack of two. You go, hmm, I will take this one, pass that card, and the other player passes you a card, and that goes there, and now you have four cards to work with. Um, that's for the first one. The second draft is really, really cool because in the second draft, um, you're going to line up um, a, a, a bunch of these comics um, out on the table um, and so what will happen is on your turn you have the option to take a card from the stack and then add it to one of those four um, rows and so there's four rows of comics you take a card from this from the deck and place it in one of those four rows once the row hits four um, that's the maximum that it can go um, but what happens is on your turn, if you don't, if you see a stack that you really like, you can take it. But once you take a stack, that stack is yours. So if you only took two comics, that's all you're getting that turn. So it's good to wait until there's four cards. But then if you don't wait, um, if you wait too long, somebody might take the stack that you want. So I thought that was a really cool way to do drafting. And it was really cool the way it works. And then it's so, and there's like hate drafting in that where it's like, this guy's collecting Doctor Strange comics. You see a Doctor Strange row that has two Doctor Stranges in it. You pull a third Doctor Strange. You obviously don't want to give that Doctor Strange to the guy who's collecting them. So what you do is instead you put it on a row with a comic that's really low valued or nobody wants. And then they're forced to have to want to either take the one with the two or take the one with the one. You can even tempt people to take it. So it's like if you see the Doctor Strange comic and you want to throw that in there and go, hey, I'm going to throw this one next to the other Doctor Strange the other person might be tempted to go, man, I might as well just take those two Doctor Stranges because that's literally probably what I'll get. Um, and that strategy was just super, super cool to tempt people into taking stuff. Hey, I know you're collecting Thor. Here's a Thor comic um, to make them take too little um, from the stack. And I thought that was a really cool draft. The third draft is the, um, the auction site. So it's like an eBay style draft. But the way that it works is that you have a stack of five, four, four, and three. If you're playing a four player game, you'll have four rows. Um, the first row has five cards. The second and third row have four and the last row has three. And so you have to, the person who's first player has to select a person to take a, take a stack or to, to auction the stack. And so first player will select a row and say, okay, well, I'm gonna take this row of five um, I'm going to auction this off and I'm going to start the bid at one. Next player goes, I'll bid two. Next player goes, I'll bid three. Next player goes, I'll bid five. Okay. And the next player goes, I'm out. The next player goes, uh, six. Next player goes, I'm out. And then it just keeps going around until people, somebody wins that thing. And then those, uh, points are spent on this little coupon thing. So if somebody bid $7, then uh, they would go down from 15 to, um, what is that, uh, eight. And so now they have $8 left because you're gonna do this draft twice. So you can't spend all your money, otherwise you kind of get stuck with whatever's left over. So then the next player, um, once you bid on a stack and you pay for it, you put that stack in. Now that you will have to still pay for those comics at the end with money, but you, you're just winning them in an auction to put them into your hand, but then you still have to pay for them afterwards. Um, but then the next player will pick the next row to auction off and then they just keep doing that until all the um, auction rows have been taken and then that's it for that one. And then the last one's the really interesting one. This one is gonna be a combination, like at the beginning of the game, you take 10, if you're playing with four people, you take 10 cards from each era and you put them all together into one giant stack. You shuffle them all, it's 30 cards in that stack and then you lay them out in rows of five except that the middle row, so it's five rows of five, 25 cards, the middle row is going to be missing one card in the center. And what that's gonna allow you to do is you're allowed to slide cards anywhere in the open space. You just can't pick it up and move it to an open space. You can slide it there. And if it can go there by sliding it, then it can take up that spot. 
Um, but what you do is you slide these cards around Tetris style to try to get it to fit into a certain spot and then take a row or a column. And then whatever you get, you get. And um, it, it's just sort of like a really cool way to auction. I love the whole sliding mecha mechanic because if somebody doesn't see a move that you had, you could say, oh man, that look at this Iron Man. Because somebody took a row it that didn't exist, that existed on another player's turn. So this player said, man, I would love to get these two Iron Man comics because they're worth a lot, but I just can't slide to get them. But then the next player goes and takes a row then it creates that avenue so you can slide it and take those Iron Mans. Then the person is going to get upset and go, oh man, you got lucky because of the timing and stuff. Super, super cool. I love that last, that convention draft. It's super cool. Then after that, you uh, once you've gone through this whole thing, at the end of um, the round, once you've gone through each of the phases, you have an organization. And that's where you're going to take all your cards, lay them out, and you're going to choose which ones you want to keep and which ones you want to um, use as payment and so they're worth what they are so if it's an era one it's worth one dollar basically two dollars for the era two three dollars for the era three and so if you have three era one cards that you want to pay for you could pay for it with one era three card you just discard that into the um, it goes back into um, the convention stack so that stack of 30 that was a combination of all the different ones um, that stack um, becomes like kind of like a discard pile where people's payments go in there. So cards that you use to pay for cards will go into the convention stack. And when the convention comes back up again, you're going to be able to do a convention because the convention is uh, it, the convention draft happens each each round of the three rounds. So all of the cards you use for payment, you could possibly get them back in the next convention. So it's pretty interesting the way it cycles like that and. Um, then you just kind of put your cards. In order for a card to be a collection, in order for cards to make a collection, you have to have a minimum of two cards. In order for it to qualify to score points though, it needs to have three um, if you're trying to uh, have a variety of collections. So you can go hard on, like if Black Panther is number one, you can go hard on collecting nothing but Black Panther po um, comics till you get to about 12 and then anything past 12 it's all worth 48 points that's a lot of points versus if you only had four black panther comics that's only worth six points um so you could go hard on just collecting only black panther and very little of anything else or maybe you say man i'm not getting a lot of the valuable comics but what i can do is i can get all the different people and have three of each that's worth 40 points almost as much as the black panther comics are worth so maybe i go variety instead of um most uh, the biggest collection um, and then at the end of the game any of these unused coupon points that you didn't spend you get those as normal points and then also on the sides of the cards you're gonna see these little symbols like for example um, this one has a number one symbol um, it has a number one symbol on it if you have a bunch of number ones in your collection you'll move your little marker up this so if I had five number one comics I would move my card up to number five, and then at the at each organization um, each organization phase, you're going to continue to move this up as the number of number one comics you have increases. Um, but also first appearances, also verses. I think those are first appearances. But um, whoever's uh, token is in the lead on the board. Um, is going to get the most points. So, for example, orange would have gotten 15, yellow would have gotten 12, black would have gotten 8, green would have gotten 3. Um, and so you get more points the, the more of these valuable comics you collect. So, for example, if I had this comic in my collection, maybe I needed a Thor comic so it could add to how many Thor comics I have here, but the little gem symbol, that little diamond symbol, is not one that is currently worth anything so that's actually not going to count for much so i have to also pay attention to that as far as gameplay and mechanics go um uh, aside from that minor little comic hunter um comic hunter aside from the minor little oh you know why are the older comics they are worth more but only for paying not for in my collection like they're not worth anything in my collection i don't like that um and i i I take off a little bit of points for that, but I think for gameplay mechanics, it is um, 1.5. Um, and uh, I know I, I usually, I don't try to do like 1.75 or 1.89, um, just because I'm, I'm like, it's either a 0, 0.5, 1, 1.5, or a 2. A 2 is the maximum points I'll give. I'll give it a 1.5, so I'm not, I, I usually go by 
by half points. And so I'll take off a half point for that, that little weird thing. But it doesn't really affect the gameplay that much. And then uh, last thing is the theme and fun factor. It's Marvel. Fantastic. Is the Marvel game franchise, that IP, is it overly produced? Yes. Why do I need Marvel Splendor? I don't. Although I do think that that's the best version of Splendor. Um, aside from maybe Splendor Duel, which I haven't played yet. Um, but um, I do think that the Marvel IP is utilized way too often, way too frequently. There's too many games with Marvel on it. But this is the one we needed. Um, because this is what this this is so nostalgic for me. Um, and I think that maybe that could be a knock against it. Because I don't know if kids nowadays are collecting the comics. I think the people, most people's Marvel knowledge is coming from the MCU, the Marvel movies, which is unfortunate because the MCU movies have gotten worse over time. And if you disagree with that, then you're wrong. But um, the, these uh, comic, the, the, a, a game where you collect comics, man, that brought me right back to my childhood. So I'd say if you are in the ripe age of like late 20s, early 30s and beyond, you will absolutely love that, which honestly, demographically, these are the people watching my videos. So, um, man, I guarantee you, if you've ever collected comics, you're going to absolutely love this game because, man, um, even the I played with some young people. I played with some, some, some young guys that were in their early 20s, like 20, 21, but they love comic books because that's just something that's been instilled in them. Um, but... Every single one of them around the table was like, I absolutely love this game. I got one of the kids and one of my, these guys, they said, I got demolished literally in last place, but I don't care. My Hulk collection is so top tier. And, and, and that's the thing that I like about this game is that this is one of the first games that you can lose and still say, man, I had a really good time playing this though. Comic Hunters... Um, the, it, it, even though it's just a, another Marvel game, it's not just a Marvel game. This is, to me, my favorite Marvel game, even over Marvel Champions. And that's only because Marvel Champions has only been sliding out because I haven't been playing it as much. But I can easily say that Comic Hunters has got to be one of my favorite Marvel games of all time. The theme is amazing. You're collecting comics. It's not, oh, I am the, the, the heroes and I am have these little minis running around a map destroying people. It's not a card game where you're, you know, the heroes and collect. It's not legendary. It is literally comic book covers, man. And you're collecting actual comic book covers, which I thought was so stinking cool, man. Um, this game is phenomenal and when i look at my score i am sitting at a nine i would love to give this a perfect score but i still think there are a couple of things that i don't enjoy about it which is again that whole weird these these three comics uh you know first appearance of falcon that's worth a lot of money not really um if it's in your collection it's not worth anything um you're better off just getting a whole bunch of ones. So I don't know how I feel about that. And again, I could be wrong about that. If I'm wrong about that and I just didn't understand the rules or something and that, no, it's like you're supposed to count up all your three value comics. If that's the case, this is a 10 out of 10. This is a perfect flawless game. But because of that and uh, also because of the fact that, um, you know, the, 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 the game just doesn't come with any kind of bags to store the, the stuff and everything that I got in here was... Um, it's well produced, but yeah, just little things like that. Um, storage is a little weird, but the setup is easy. I, I just think that this game is a nine, man, like a nine, 9.5. It is super, super good. I think that if you were to buy a copy of this in Portuguese and just get the English instructions um, from BGG, you would absolutely love this game. Now, if you're going to be paying, I got, I got this for 50 bucks. Yeah, I, I lucked out. I got this for $50 from somebody, which I think is only a few dollars more than it would sell for in Brazil. Um, but I got it for 50 bucks from somebody that was selling it online. Check Facebook. Some people have it here in America and they're just selling copies of it because they have extra copies. Um, some people, uh, or if you go to Dice Tower Cruises or any of the conventions, you can play it there and determine if this is something you want to buy. I think paying anything over $60 might be a bit too much for the game because I, I, this is not a $60 game. Like if you pay, if I paid 60 for this, I'd probably be disappointed. It's a really good game, but I just don't understand how this requires anything more than 60 bucks. This is definitely a 40 to $50 game, but it's well worth it. Um, 
but hopefully they get English copies so we can all have our hands on this game because I think everybody deserves to play this. Per, this, this game is amazing, top 10 games. Um, it actually made it into my top 10, surprisingly. I redid my top 10 just to see like how some of these new games that I've had have fared against some of these older games. And man, this one has risen up into my top 10. Like it is an honorary top 10 member. Um, but yeah, man, that's it. That's Comic Hunters. I hope you guys enjoyed this game review. I hope it doesn't give you too much FOMO that you go out and you spend a, a crazy amount of money. If you got the disposable income, just go for it. Um, but if not, don't go broke trying to get this game. But it is phenomenal. And if you hate it, then I didn't tell you anything. Well, see you guys later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Love you guys. Peace.